I'd like to call the uh, Planning Commission meeting for March 8th to order. Uh, please uh, stand and join me to, with the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't know, I didn't taste it. Roll call, please. Commissioner Brago. Here. Commissioner Bautista. Here. Commissioner Esparza. Here. Chair Weisenberger. Here. Okay, item number one, approval of minutes from our February 8th meeting. Need a motion to approve. I make a motion. This is Commissioner Brago. I make a motion. We approve the minutes. I second. For February 8th. We have a first and second. Second and roll call, please. Commissioner Brago. Yes. Commissioner Bautista. Yes. Commissioner Sparza. Yes. Chair Weisenberger. Yes. Okay, item number two is under the heading of old business, and this is to amend conditional use permit number 699, a resolution ratifying the approved request by Michael Kaufman slash 7-Eleven Incorporated for an amendment to a conditional use permit for an existing condition of approval that requires beer or malt beverages to be sold in quantities of six or more to be modified to allow the sale of packages of three or more at 15105 Lakewood Boulevard, Unit A, in the C3 General Commercial Zone. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, members of the Commission, uh, this item, a request to amend CUP number 699 to allow the sale of beer and malt liquor in packages of three or more was heard by the Planning Commission at its February 8th meeting and was approved. We have brought back a resolution reflecting that decision and Planning Intern Jessica Guillen will give you a quick summary. Good afternoon. I will be presenting on Amendment to Conditional Use Permit number 699. The applicant is Michael Kaufman and 7-Eleven. I will refresh what was covered in last month's uh, meeting tonight. The applicant is requesting to modify a condition of approval to allow the sale of beer or malt beverages in quantities of three rather than the mandated six pack minimum as the condition is currently written in conditional use permit number 699. It was decided that amendment, amendment to conditional use permit number 699 was to be approved with certain conditions which are listed in the report. The subject suite address is 1510. 15105 Lakewood Boulevard, Unit A, in the C3 General Commercial Zone. It is located on the southwest corner of Lakewood Boulevard and Somerset Boulevard. A laundromat occupies Unit B in the same building, and the store operates 24 hours daily with alcoholic beverage sale hours from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. Here is an aerial view of the location. We have Lakewood Boulevard running north and south and Paramount Boulevard running east and west. The blue boundary is the 20... 22,054 square foot lot in which the subject suite is located. The subject suite is the rectangle shaded in orange. It is recommended that the Planning Commission adopt resolution. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask. <laughs> Thank you so much. No questions? No, not for me. Okay, then we need a, a motion to approve this request by Michael Kaufman and 7-Eleven. Commissioner Brego, I make a motion. Um, we amend conditional use permit number 699, number PC21022. As far as I will second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Commissioner Brego? Yes. Commissioner Bautista? Yes. Commissioner Sparza? Yes. Chair Weisenberger? Yes. <clears throat> okay, item number three public hearing. It's a zoning ordinance text amendment. Number 23, this is a request to revise regulations for condominium conversions in the RM multiple family residential zone. <laughs> Staff report, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, this item is a request to update our condominium, our condominium conversion ordinance that was first adopted in 1990, and things have changed over the last 32 years in relation to condo conversions, and this is a, is a proposal to update our code and Assistant Planning Director John King will give you the details. Uh, thank you. Um, 
Planning Director Carver and uh, Chair Weisenberger and Commissioners. As John mentioned, this is a, a proposed amendment. It's a recommendation that you would take to the City Council whether or not to revise regulations for condominium conversions. And it's uh, for the RM, multiple family residential zone, as, as it's written in the code. As you're aware, as you know, um, condominiums are separately owned individual housing units. Then a larger property with common ownership in some areas, like parking lots or um, driveways, some common open space, landscaping, and amenities, you know, swimming pool, maybe a barbecue area, maybe a picnic area, or playground. The uh, state heavily regulates condo conversions. So what that is is just a little background. Um, you know, existing apartments that were built, you know, constructed at some point in time, and the property owners might see an opportunity to convert them for um, individual ownership and to uh, sell them off, sometimes all at the same time. Sometimes they kind of sell them off by piecemeal, one at a time. And it really depends. And it's something that the city has supported, that most, most cities support, because um, uh, a certain value for home ownership. And you know, we do have, through the years, kept a, a great balance of, uh, it's important to have rental housing, it's important to have ownership, uh, but there is a, a strong case for uh, home ownership for the lasting roots that, um, more, more longer lasting roots that um, the residents plant into the, the community. So as, as John Carver mentioned, there has been a, a ordinance, ordinance on the books on the city side um, since 1990, and it's a little bit outdated. The state legislature has passed some, um, some regulations through the years, um, kind of updating that. And more recently, I think 2017, 2018, there were more changes on the side of uh, tenant notification and giving the tenants the opportunity, the first opportunity to, um, to, to buy the home that they live in. Um, here in town, we don't see these very often. The most recent was completed in 2005, and that was over on, on Gardendale. Um, however, we are being proactive uh, from what we hear. There is a, a new wave of um, condominium conversions taking place throughout the country, so we want to stay on top of that and keep that balance that we talked about between um, homeowners and renters and, and making sure that the um, any renters that are that are displaced are not um, just you know cast aside. So the proposed ordinance uh, achieves a, a number of um, an, a number of goals. So it, first of all, the, the way the code reads is that only apartment buildings built with the 1982 building code or um, thereafter are eligible for a condominium com conversion. We're proposing to change that to allow for apartment buildings, apartment units that have been substantially rehabilitated. So if they upgrade, you know, the electrical, the plumbing, you know, whatever it takes to, to make them up to date, um, that they, there's a strong case to, to allow them to convert to condominium. We're also updating to add the tenant notice requirements. And in terms of evictions, having, um, and this follows state law, so, no eviction would uh, um, occur as a result of a conversion for at least 180 days after the approval of a tentative map. And tentative map, that's the subdivision map, which is the, the, the first step in the formal subdivision process. Also, um, a, a very modest uh, financial assistance for any impacted residents who would not be able to afford um, you know, the opportunity to, to buy their, their home. Also, just some minor things, uh, clarifying that outdoor common space does not include parking areas or driveways. Um, there are some minimum outdoor common space area um, regulations. And adding that the required 80 cubic feet of exterior storage space would have to be in an enclosed and lockable area of permanent construction. So just making sure that's clear. And uh, clarifying and keeping up to date, landscaping has to be drought tolerant and replacing the requirement that's now in the code, the code requires a trash compactor in, in kitchens. Um, and we see that there's not really a need for that now that we have new organic waste disposal requirements that have been passed down from, from the state. So a number of uh, proposed changes. And with that, we recommend that you 
adopt resolution PC 22013, and that would recommend that the city council um, approve this, approve an ordinance, and it'll probably get to them next month if you desire. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, John. Questions here? Okay, let's open the public hearing portion of this meeting. John, do we have any public comments tonight? Uh, no, nothing in favor or opposed. Okay. And uh, we'll need a motion to close the public hearing portion. We get a motion here to close this public hearing. I'll motion to close. I'll second. So moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Commissioner Brago. Yes. Commissioner Bautista. Yes. Commissioner Esparza. Yes. Chair Weisenberger. Yes. Okay, now we need a motion then to uh, adopt this planning commission resolution 22013, uh, recommending that the city, uh, or that we uh, recommend that the city council approve this zoning change amendment. This is Commissioner Brego, I make a motion we uh, approve, uh, excuse me, adopt the planning commission resolution number PC22013. Barza will second it. Moved and second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Brago? Yes. Commissioner Bautista? Yes. Commissioner Sparza? Yes. Chair Weisenberger? Yes. Okay, move to new business. Item number four, public hearing. Uh, conditional use permit number 912. A request by Pedro Guerrero, GCC Cabinetry, to operate a cabinetry shop specializing in custom-made cabinets, for homes and businesses at 16253 Minnesota Avenue in the M2 Heavy Manufacturing Zone. Staff report, please. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. This item is a request for a conditional use permit to allow the operation of a cabinet shop at 16253 Minnesota Avenue in the Heavy Manufacturing Zone. And Associate Planner Ivan Reyes will go over this item for you. Thank you, John. Uh, honorable uh, Commissioner, members of the Commission. Um, I'm here to present the conditional use permit. The, this applicant is requesting to operate a cabinetry shop specializing in custom-made cabinets for homes and businesses. The property is located at 16253 Minnesota Avenue and is in the M2 Heavy Manufacturing Zone. The proposed hours of operation are Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. They will have two employees. Here is an aerial view of the site. The project, location, the project location occupies a 2,203 square foot building, highlighted in blue, and is on a 7,706 square foot property, highlighted in yellow, at the northwest corner of Minnesota Avenue and Jackson Street. There are three areas in the building that would be used for different stages of the building process. The main entrance to the building leads into a lobby and office area for the business. The method of production is conducted in the fabrication room where a variety of machinery is used, including a dust collector, which is highlighted in red. The assembly or finish room uh, rounds off the final stages of production. In this area, there is an open face paint booth indicated in blue on the floor plan. All work will be conducted within the building and there is no equipment stored on the outside. This is a close up detail of the interior dust collector and open face booth uh, paint booth that will be used for the business. The proposed dust collector system on the left will be a new, more efficient model that will also require South Coast Air Quality Management District or SCAQMD review and approval before it can be operated. The primary dust collector machine is approximately 34 inches long, 30, 24 inches wide, and 22 inches in height. The dust collector machine weighs approximately 117 pounds. The proposed paint booth on the right will also require AQMD uh, review and approval before it can be operated. The paint booth is 72 square feet and 7 feet tall and weighs approximately 1,500 pounds. Here are site photos of the existing conditions of the, of the building. The left photo is the existing entrance to the cabinet shop. The applicant has recently painted the building and awnings for an up-to-date look. The second is the rear of the cabinet shop. As part of the conditions of approval, the applicant will have to remove all trash and debris on the property and maintain, maintain in a clean manner at all times. The existing planners in the front entrance will also be refurbished with new landscaping. These are a few examples of the cabinets 
that are produced by the applicant for commercial and residential uses. As part of this project, an environmental analysis was conducted by planning and environmental services consultant, Elevated Entitlements, in accordance with the California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA, and CEQA guidelines. A copy of the report summarizing the analysis is included. The consultant focused on the dust collection system as a means of implementing AQMD rules to ensure the wood-based business operations do not negatively impact air quality. In summary, by complying with AQMD Rule 115 and Rule 1137, the applicant will reduce part particulate matter emissions from woodworking operations to result in no significant impacts to air quality. Additionally, the project would be subject to similar rules as noted on the chart. The analysis determined that the project is categorically exempt from the provisions of CEQA under Section 15301, Class 1. The proposed business is in an appropriate zone. As part of the conditions of approval, the applicant will remove the security window bars. Outside storage and outdoor work are prohibited, and trucks are prohibited from overnight storage on the property. So with that, it's recommended, recommended that the Planning Commission approve, adopt resolution number PC22007 for conditional use permit number 912. This concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, let's open the public hearing portion of this uh, here, this issue. John, we have any? Questions? We don't have any comment cards um, in favor or opposed. Okay. In that case, we need a motion to close the public hearing portion. I have a motion to close. I'll second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Brago? Yes. Commissioner Bautista? Yes. Commissioner Sparza? Yes. Chair Weisenberger? Yes. Okay, now we need a motion then. <clears throat> Excuse me. To adopt Planning Commission Resolution Number 22007, approving this request by Pedro Guerrero and the GCC. Mr. Mr. Chair, um, can I make a suggestion to an amendment to a condition? Mm -hmm. And this is basically um, a, a concern from code enforcement that we would like to have. It's, it is condition number 24. <clears throat> we see in the picture that there is some trash and debris that is stored around the premises in the rear of the premise. What we don't want to do is to have that type of debris and trash remain there after the CUP has been issued and then go in for a possible revocation. So what we would like uh, for the commission to do is to reword 24 that the trash and recyclable shall, shall be stored and trash and shall be picked up and deposed in appropriate trash facilities prior to issuance of the CUP. Mm. Okay. We would like that cleaned up prior to the CUP being issued. As a condition, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. I that think would that's please a, the commission. We would, uh, we would request that. Great. Great. I think that's uh, appropriate. Yes. Okay. So how do we go about doing that, John? By just incorporating what I just said. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's the condition that we're going to approve it, but with the condition to actually have that cleaned up before they actually start. Okay. Good. Very good. I'll second. In that case, uh, we need a motion to adopt this resolution, uh, PC22007, with the explained additions to condition number 24. We'd have all that trash cleaned up and taken away before this permit is approved. Yes. Okay, can we get a motion? Go ahead. I'll, I'll approve it. I'll second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Brago? Yes. Commissioner Bautista? Yes. Commissioner Sparza? Yes. Chair Weisenberger? Yes. Okay, let's move on to item number five, additional use permit number 916. This is a request by Bridget Wirtz, Struggles Incorporated, to operate a warehouse slash distribution business of personal protective equipment, safety eyewear products at 7825 Somerset Boulevard in the Clearwater East specific plan area. Staff report, please. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Uh, this item is a conditional use permit uh, request for warehousing and distribution of personal protective equipment at 7825 Somerset Boulevard 
and Ivan Reyes will give you more information. Thank you, John. The applicant is requesting a request by Stoggles to operate a warehouse and distribution business of personal protective equipment or PPE safety eyewear products at 7825 Somerset Boulevard, Suite E in the Clearwater East Pacific Plan area. The 6.81 acre site known as the Somerset Business Park is developed with four multi-tenant buildings. The proposed location consists of 12,817 square feet of leased building. Here is a snapshot of the website. Stoggles is a direct-to-consumer e-commerce business and is reimagining how people care for their eyes by creating stylish and shatterproof protective eyewear. Here's a view of their website. This is an aerial view of the project location. The business highlighted in blue will occupy a suite in the Somerset Business Park, which is highlighted in yellow. The floor plan of the layout consists of an 11,852 square feet of ground floor for warehouse use and a 965 square foot mezzanine used for office space. There are seven parking spaces, including one accessible stall uh, directly in front of the, the suite. The delivery and pickup of materials in conjunction with the warehouse and distribution business will be limited to courier services, such as United States Postal Service or DHL. The number of on-site pickups will not exceed more than one per day by USPS. These are site photos of the property. The first photo is the existing entrance to the Somerset Business Park, and the second is the entrance for the proposed business. And with that, it's recommended that we adopt uh, resolution number PC22008 for conditional use permit number 916. Thank you. Any questions here? Yeah. Okay, let's open the public hearing portion of this. John, have we got any testimony tonight? Uh, no comment cards, sir. Okay. In that case, we'll need a motion to close the public hearing portion. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Yep. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Brago? Yes. Commissioner Bautista? Yes. Commissioner Sparza? Yes. Chair Weisenberger? Yes. Okay. Now we need a motion then to approve Adopt Planning Commission number 22008, approving this request by Bridget Wirtz and Stavos. This is Commissioner Brago. I make a motion. We approve um, resolution PC22008. Will second it. Second it. Roll call, please. Commissioner Brago? Yes. Commissioner Bautista? Yes. Commissioner Sparza? Yes. Chair Weisenberger? Yes. Okay. Item number six oral reports. City Council actions? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Uh, last week at the City Council meeting, the Council certified the housing element, um, the update to the health and safety element, and then the new environmental justice element that you had looked at um, in February, um, at your meeting in February. Uh, so um, these are important documents, the housing element in particular. Um, to, have a, to have a certified element um, is to ensure that we continue to get money from the state of California for various different types of things that we do throughout the community. So uh, we appreciate your, your hard work on that um, over the last year, um, and uh, the council did approve it. and that, was it thank you okay thank you <clears throat> okay uh, item number seven comments any from our city attorney okay, okay. how about our commissioner tonight any comments no None. comments no staff no no comments in that case uh we move to adjournment our next meeting will be on april 12th at 6 p.m Okay, we'd like to open up the Paramount Development Review Board meeting. It's 627. Can I get a roll call of members? Board Member Bautista? Yes. Board Member Sparza? Board Member Weisenberger? Here. Chair Brago? Yes, I mean, here. Uh, okay, first item is approval for the minutes for February 8th, 2022. <coughs> Can I get approval? I approve the minutes. I second it. We have a first and a second. Board Member Bautista? Yes. Board Member Sparza? Yes. Board Member Weisenberger? Yes. Chair Brago? Yes. 
Any comments, board members? No. no? Staff? No. Okay, this is a quick one. <laughs> um, we'll adjourn, adjourn it this meeting, or our next meeting will be on April 12th, 2022 at 6 p.m. So, move on to the next one, will be our Paramount Economic Development Board meeting. Can I get a roll call of members, please? Board Member Bautista? Yes. Board Member Weisenberger? Here. Vice Chair Esparza? Here. Chair Abrego? Here. Minutes, can we get approval for the minutes for February 8th, 2022? Yeah, Esparza will approve the minutes of February the 8th. Yeah, I'll second. Okay. Roll call, please. Board Member Bautista? Uh, yes. Me. Board Member uh, Weisenberger? Yes. Vice Chair Esparza? Yes. Chair Abrego? Yes. Sorry. Uh, the next item is public comments. Uh, no public comments. New business reports, oral report, planning, development, year end summary? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, board members, uh, John King will give you a summary of the uh, planning department. Um, and this is a year end summary, calendar year 2021. John, thank you, Chair Abrego and, and board members. I know we're, we're kind of almost deep into this new year, but it, we did want to re recap what happened last year. And um, we gave this presentation to the, to the city council. So we thought it would be um, great to, to pass it on, on, to, on to you. You know, I do want to take the opportunity, <laughs> kind of going backwards to the, the planning commission, uh, the zoning ordinance for the condominium conversions. I do want to thank the, uh, our legal team with the city attorney and his assistant uh, city attorney. So I'm sorry, it's, it doesn't make sense with right now, but I have a microphone, and I want to thank them. They, we couldn't have done that um, work with, without the city attorney's office. So at the matter at hand, uh, building, um, building safety and planning division. Those are our two divisions, as you know, of the planning department. Um, COVID-19 continued. Um, I'm not sure if it's, if it's over or nobody really knows, but it was a factor last year. And with, uh, but although with construction and development, especially housing, we are, what we do, it's considered critical infrastructure. So we, we carried on. And um, in particular, I uh, want to point out to give credit to the, the building inspectors, the building staff that went out into the field every working day. And, um, you know, they were in, inside homes. And, you know, when there was a lot of question about uh, health and safety, they... Um, you know, they did a, did a great job ensuring that the, that this work uh, continued, and and you could see they were very busy. Uh, One thousand one hundred thirty-seven permits issued, um, three thousand six hundred and sixty-nine inspections per, performed all, all over the city. I don't think there's any any uh, staff member that's been to as many properties as our um, building and safety staff. And and here's um, Inspector Rick Baptista in action. Um, on the planning division side. Uh, we worked on a lot of different uh, types of applications, and a lot, a lot of them went went to uh, the Planning Commission and the Development Review Board. Um, we had 106 administrative actions, which are, are more semi-formal um, room additions or ADUs. We also include some some food trucks, um, some other um, pat let's see patio covers, new garages. Um, 106 of those, so those do not go to the Planning Commission, um, but our Planning staff, you know, there's a lot of work involved. Development review applications, which does go to you. There are nine of them. CUPs, 15, and a number of other types of applications. Um, then a lot of business license reviews. So the planning department does review every, each and every business that, that opens up, make sure they're in the right location and doing the right thing. And some temporary permits that were um, reviewed and issued. So on to some specific projects, uh, 10, 10 homes. So this is important. This is a uh, 10 home uh, project, as you know, right by Home Depot, just to the, to the east. And the photo you see before you is, is today. So that's, that's where we are. There's, there, these homes are really taking, taking shape. And it um, looks like it's, is that maybe the brown coat on the, the east, you, um, I, I believe I see there. Um, and I heard there might be some drywall underway. Uh, at Indiana and Somerset, this is the um, kind of a slow moving project, but we do have good news. We have, uh, there's a new contractor, the property owner um, replaced 
the old contractor and has a, a new contractor who seems to be moving moving ahead. So that will be wrapped up pretty soon. ADUs, we had 38 permits issued in 2021. That's a record. Um, it's very popular. 26 of those were conversions, mostly garages. 12 of them were new structures. Um, uh, nine of the uh, nine ADUs were final, meaning final meaning the construction was done and inspected, and uh, they passed inspection. And so there's new new homes for Paramount residents. Uh, Tiramia Coffee, um, another sort of a slow moving start, but we're hoping that from here going forward, they they have some momentum, and we'll have our coffee soon. Another option right next to Starbucks. Um, Fusion Food Hall. This is the site of Platini Jeans and Alondra, just uh, west of Garfield, across from McDonald's. So this could be a very exciting project. They're, um, they start, they're, they've been in touch with building safety and plan check, and from what the owners have told me, they are now working with the fire department to make sure the fire department plans are, are correct. So you have um, a lot of food options in, inside there. Uh, 2000 Insurance Service. I should have updated this photo. A um, little more progress on, on this. It's kind of kind of a mess, but it, it'll look great before long. This is another project where they had some little hiccups, but they've they're they're moving ahead. And uh, that was you know the perennial restaurant change that will now be an insurance office. Um, a house in the industrial area, kind of a lonely house, a holdover from uh, long ago. Um, this is on, on Illinois, south of Alondra. House is gone, and the, um, this uh, now four-suite industrial building will, will soon rise. Um, and we, you worked on a number of recommendations to the council for changing the code. Uh, one was uh, home gardens, so expanding home gardens and um, expanding our sustainability efforts at the home level to all residential zones. Um, ADUs, meaning what the state wants, and SROs, those are single um, residential occupancy. Um, you passed an or, uh, you recommended approval, and the uh, city council went along with that. Thanks for your work. And uh, SB9, um, we don't have a lot of fans locally of, about SB9, so um, the, the state is, it's a state requirement, so to make sure that the city is not as impacted as it could be. Um, the city council passed an urgency ordinance in, in this case and, re, and um, followed up with a, a second urgency ordinance. So we're going to be working um, with again with the city attorney and bring back a more permanent ordinance by the end of this year. Uh, the North Paramount Gateway specific plan. So you reviewed this along with the city council and so we're kind of at a halfway point. The environmental report is, is underway, the um, environmental impact report. So you'll see this again in a few months. And as John Carver mentioned, the city council adopted the housing element and the new, the first environmental justice plan and um, updated the health and safety element. Um, very popular program is the home improvement program. And that's where the city uses federal funds to help homeowners fix up their, um, their single-family homes. And this is being expanded to um, mobile, mobile homes, right, John? Um, very, very soon, mobile homes will have the same opportunity to, to apply. And we had a couple of projects completed on Chester and San Luis. And um, some others are in the pre-construction phase, getting their documents and contractors together. Um, this is a commercial re rehabilitation project, another popular program. Um, we do about one of these a, a year, and you can see how it transforms one property, and it gets, um, the eye catches the eye of the neighbors, and they want, they like to catch up. So it's a good uh, catalyst for a um, business community. Um, you're you're going to review the World Energy um, EIR, or a recommend, make a recommendation to the city council for the CUP and EIR and the zone variance. Um, this reminder, so last year a lot of work went on, including a, on the bottom, that's a photo from a, a public uh, meeting, community meeting. Um, outdoor dining, um, that has been a lifesaver for many restaurants, and as 
kind of wind down the formal uh, Paramount Al Fresco program. We'll be um, bringing back some options for um, to, for business restaurant restaurant business owners. And there's also I want to just put a nod to the Explore Param Paramount program, Explore Paramount, that um, our economic development team is um, has launched last year. And this is a fun one. We go around town. Um, intern Jessica Gillen, Gillen in, in the back. She um, she was part of this judging um, the holiday scene. And our very own chair, commission chair, Gordon Weisberger, was involved in this as well. So that's a lot of fun. And to brighten up the community, we've been working with a number of different artists on the Param Paramount Paints program. And this brightens up some boring utility boxes. Um, and we have a variety of, variety, many, many types of art styles. And here's, you know, some are more contemporary, some are, you know, there, there's two horse designs here. So one is um, a little more realistic, another has um, a different style. <laughs> and, uh, and what I like about these is they're very grounded in the Paramount community. You see on the one on the left, Nostalgia by Karina Vasquez. It invokes Rhodium. That was the name of the uh, the, um, the the swap meet, the, the, the drive-in the theater was was called the Rhodium way back when. And then the second one, it says Home is Paramount. On the other side, it has the, the zip code. And uh, there's a on the other side, it's a, there's a, a drawing of City Hall and the Hay Tree. So they're very, they are very grounded in, in the Paramount community. Here's another, here's another set. And at the very right, Paramount, home is where the heart is. Oh, that um, makes sense. Yeah. yeah, so I really like that. Uh, Ms. Yellow is the second one to the right. She has art all over the world, literally. She's um, Haiti, Egypt. She's, she's really all, all over in Detroit. I mean, different states in the United States. So it's an, somewhat an honor to have different types of artists. And just to close, uh, Paramount Home Sweet Home, that's not there anymore, but at uh, front of the uh, Gamino restaurant, uh, there was outdoor dining in the sidewalk during COVID. So to be safe, the city installed these concrete barriers. They didn't look very nice. So we had this local artist, um, Sal, or Gonzalo, um, decorate them, and he... It was like to him. It was it was like a, a show. He he put he put on a show, and um, he was uh, great at answering a lot of questions with uh, diners. And uh, just want to close with uh, with his work. And then he and he put in there Paramount Home Sweet Home, and that's how I conclude it. And I, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks, John. <clears throat> any questions? No. I well, I I just want to say the one that we were discussing like previously in the I don't know it was like November December. That was the picture, right? The Paramount one, the previous picture. Yes, that's right. Okay, because remember we were saying that the dark, the blue is kind of dark. That's right. So, so we changed it. So okay, that's, that's what I wanted to see if it was actually. Okay, <laughs> I like that. Great. So you're pleased. Question I have is, um, when are we going to put an in and out in Paramount? <laughs> Where would you like to put it? Where? We have the habit. Even Val, South Gate, huh? everybody has an in and out. That's true. So there's, it's like a, we're in the the hole of the donut. So maybe it's time for the us for in and out to fill the donut hole. That's right. Yeah, it is. It's, really it's a good opportunity. <laughs> we'll be in touch with them. You know what, John? I have a comment too. Yes. Uh, you mentioned the uh, decoration contest. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but I tell you, we went out at nighttime to to judge the houses. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you know, when you start looking for addresses at at nighttime. Sometimes it's kind of tough, and I and I noticed oh, that a lot of the uh, addresses that are painted on the curb are wiped out or really need to be updated. I don't know exactly how that happens. I believe the city has a role in that, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. we ended up taking a flashlight and getting out of the car sometimes to be able to get up and look at the numbers on the houses themselves. And some of them didn't have them visible, or they were covered by trees. And um, so it'd be real nice if we could. Maybe one day get the uh, get the curbs updated. In the, in the city. Maybe before the season. Obviously, yeah, obviously we'll, we're doing this in winter, but we'll, we'll pass it on to Public Works. I think you would. That, that, that's do a that. Public Works thing. Huh? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is is that part of city's responsibility, or 
Every Not really. I, I painted my I painted I my whole I, street. I I did yeah. it in for for fun. I, I, I recall my, a contract four houses. that we, when I re, when I report somebody. Why don't we get I some of these artists? <laughs> <laughs> well, I I ended up doing mine too. Boston yeah, did a few stencils. At, uh, yeah. He did eight houses. Code enforcement and go with that. I can't find that. You know, that's, yeah. yeah. That's I'll I'll, I'll I'll pass that all on to whoever. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, John. Oh goodness. Any more comments from our board members? No? Any comments from our staff? No, sir. Okay, our meetings adjourn. Our next meeting is April 12th, 2022, 6 p.m.